Hello, my name is Peter Hogenkamp and I'm a practicing physician and uh, crime novelist. My first book, as you can see here, is called The Vatican Conspiracy. I'm happy to be uh, taking part in this project with the Crime Writers Association about our early influences. And I will tell you that um, my earliest influence uh, on my literary career, especially back then with, with uh, reading, because as a nine-year-old um, I didn't do that much writing, although I did some, um, was Alistair MacLean. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Alistair MacLean. Uh, he wrote some very popular books. This one here, Alistair MacLean's Where Eagles Dare. I think this is actually the original paperback. I got it from my mother, who was a huge, huge Alistair MacLean fan. The Guns of Navarone, also a good one. Uh, an underrated one here is uh, When Eight Bells Toll, also a great book. Um, so <laughs> I started reading Alistair MacLean when I was nine, as I mentioned. Uh, we went away for the weekend to the, uh, Cape Cod, and my older brothers and sisters didn't come, and I was bored. Uh, so my mother um, uh, gave me um, uh, a copy of uh, Fear is the Key, which I still have, and I, I couldn't find for this presentation. So uh, trust me, I still have it, and it's still one of my favorite books ever. But I, I spent the whole weekend reading that book, and much to my parents' um, happiness, because you know that kind of got me out of their hair for the weekend. And I came home to the library, and I got every book that I could, uh, this was 1973, and there was probably six, seven, eight, nine Alice and McLean books, and I read them all within a short period of time. And then I would wait, like the rest of us, and I would wait for the one book year that he would write, and I would read it in two or three days and be mad at myself about it. But I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things. One of them was that um, I, uh, McLean did certain things very, very well. Uh, he was a great storyteller, and he, he'd be the first person to tell you that. In fact, I've read some of his um, uh, biogra uh, biography, and he talks about being a great storyteller, but being a bad writer. Uh, and he could tell a story. Um, his prose was phenomenal. He was very hyperbolic in his prose, um, and he was also hyperbolic in his character descriptions, um, which when I was nine back in the um, 1970s, uh, I didn't notice it was a flaw. Um, but I have read several criticisms of him since then, and I can certainly see what they're talking about. His, his main characters were absolutely heroic. They were flaw, uh, flawless. They were debonair, witty, charming, moral. I mean, they had every good character, good looking. They had every single good uh, uh, trait that you'd ever want. Um, and they, uh, they were always going for the girl and getting the girl, saving the damsel in distress. And that was, you know, one of his biggest problems is that he was terrible in his female characters. And, and by admission, by the way, he admitted that women characters were only there for the male character to save. They had no role in the book. They didn't have any depth to them. They would never certainly get themselves out of anything. Uh, and in 2020, I, I wonder whether Alistair McLean would even be able to, you know, to get an agent, frankly, um, or, or you know, much less a publisher. I just don't think... That, that people were going to accept this kind of, you know, the hollowness, the, the flatness of, of his, um, all of his characters, but especially his female characters. So you're wondering why I am, I'm talking about him. Well, he was an early influence, you know, like it or not, he was a very early influence on me. And I remember when I was um, oh, about 15, I wrote a book, very McLean-like book about a, uh, uh, a, a Navy guy that was trying to save the world from a, a, a a madman who had nuclear missiles, and it was a very McLean kind of thing. I remember my father reading it and telling me it needed work. <laughs> so I put away my writing career for a while, and when I came back to writing many, many years later, after you know my education and you know starting my family and starting my practice and all this, I remember you know it's just because I had grown up on McLean, I was writing McLeanish, and, and his prose is excellent, although a little bit hyperbolic for sure. But you know, I, I had to get away from those uh, those two dimensional characters, and I remember my first agents and, and the, the uh, you know the editors I was working with were were quick to point this out. Like Peter, the, you know, you need to add some depth to these characters, and it took me it took me a while to kind of get away from that because I was raised on it. You know, um, it's like almost like the beer that you were raised on. You know, that you drank when you were a young man. You know, whether it's good or not, it's what you like is what it's what you know. Um, and, and since we're talking about that, I was raised on Matt's beer from Utica, New York, and 
I still think it's the best beer, although it, it generally isn't rated very well. So anyway, Alistair McLean, if you haven't read any of these books, they make great movies because as they say, he's a wonderful storyteller. And, and what is a book in the end? It's a story. Um, so as I sat down and started to write, um, I really wanted to keep some of McLean's um, good characteristics, like the fast-paced stories, um, the cinematic kind of um, uh, scenes that he had, um, how quickly you would go through the, the books. I wanted to keep all that pacing. Uh, and I wanted to keep up some of his prose, but um, uh, not, not, not be so um, uh, hyperbolic. And I wanted to make the characters a lot more, you know, three-dimensional, a lot deeper than, than, than his characters were. Although I will say, um, I still think uh, Fear is the Key is one of the best books that I've ever read. Um, as I grew up, um, I became, I got a new um, a writing hero, uh, and that man is uh, Graham Greene. And I still think this is probably my favorite book of all times, The Power and the Glory. I'm sure many of you have read it. Another great book by Graham Greene is The End of the Affair. And Greene's probably the opposite of McLean in many ways. Um, he's a wonderful, he writes wonderful prose. His characters are incredibly deep. Um, and he also tells a good story, although certainly they're not as fast paced as, as McLean's. One of the things that Green does very well is that as opposed to McLean, where the good people are impossibly good and the bad people are impossibly bad, Green's characters are more like the rest of us. And that is that they're, you know, the good characters are good and bad and the bad characters are bad and good as well. I'm going to leave it there. I just wanted to say hi and introduce you to uh, myself and um, uh, the Vatican Conspiracy. I'd love for you to tell, read for the book and tell me if you see any Graham Greene in there or any Alice McLean. Anyway, it's been wonderful to spend uh, six and a half minutes with you. Cheers.